Hey guys, what's up, Mustangs? Boo Guy S1 back to Forza Horizon 3 with a, another stunt course build. Sorry I missed the last one, I was a bit busy over the weekend doing stuff. And anyway, we are with the Porsche 356 because this Porsche has not gone around this circuit yet. And I figured why not do the wibbly wobbly dust machine from Forza 6 because on Forza 6, this thing was a gigantic dust machine when you maxed it out. But I'm not sure how it will fare on Horizon 3 with the class system. It will be interesting how it will fare. I do want... It has lots of upgrades. I do want that. Yep. I want... Yes, I want luggage on the back. I want luggage. Okay, but I want the air laughing. Going to remove the rear bumper or change it. And... Sure, I can take one pound out by adding stuff to it. Alright, not gonna question it. Now, the Hot Wheels Race Tires does shoot us up in a C class. Halfway through C class, 215s in the front are not good. 225s in the rear are not, are, are better, but still not good. We need a transmission, uh, diff while we're at it. Now, just put all of these bits and pieces on to try and not get a incredibly terrible car to drive. It does have a whopping 60 horsepower and 81 foot-pounds of torque. It's not a very good vehicle. We can get it below 1,700 pounds, though, in C-Class, which is pretty darn good. Now, the stock engine's not going to be anywhere near powerful enough, so let's just see the upgrades we can put on it. We can put a 2.7 liter flat 6, a flat 4 turbo, or a turbo rally engine. You know what? We are going to go... For the flat 4 turbo, because that is the lighter of the engines. That can actually get us to the top of the class. And not that we need these. Let's put the cams on. Put that on. What about the turbo? How much does the turbo add? 56 horsepower. It's actually going to be a pretty decent power weight ratio. And what I might do is I might take the turbo off and try to stick the other parts on. Just because then I can get some better weight. Some more weight chucked out of the car, but I will probably have to go back to the turbo. There it is on, I did not. Okay, I might not have to go for the turbo then. I'm kind of flummoxing around with this stuff. Yeah, I'm going to need to go for a turbo. Might have to take some non-weight saving part. No, I won't. That's really scary, you know? When 56 horsepower adds 1 PI, that is not good. That's not good in any shape of the imagination. I'm gonna leave it stock. No, the flywheel, because I can go over here. Sneak a drive line on. Yes, that shapes a lot of power. Can I sneak that on? No. Okay, so 543 horsepower is not the light, not the most powerful car we've ever had. 493 foot pounds of torque. However, even with a roll cage and a four wheel drive system and turbos, it still weighs less than 1,800 pounds. So I'm hoping with that incredible power weight ratio, or not incredible, but decent power weight ratio, I'll be able to get some decent enough lap times in. Alright, we have to beat a 116.910 set by the Infiniti Q50 O Rouge. And based on the acceleration suspension, I'm gonna guess to see it's still a wibble wobbly death machine that I remember. Yeah, however, it looks to be quite fast. Oh yeah, it's definitely a wibbly wobbly thing. But it's actually not a death machine. It's not a death machine. So, I guess that's positive. 180 miles an hour in a flat absolute mile. Or an hour. That was a nice landing. That was a quite a nice landing. You know, based on these... Oh, dear. You have no turn. You know the thing? Carry the speed. Carry the speed. There we go. Can't quite go full throttle through there. This thing is so sketchy. It is so sketchy through here. But it carries some good speed because it's out a full boost. We didn't even go 200 miles an hour in there. And we were carrying more speed than some of the cars ever have. Now, I have zero faith in the vehicle around this bit. I'm sorry, I just don't. Yeah, right to assume so, given the fact that I was just barely under control there at 97 miles an hour. Yeah, this is the wobble wagon that I know and am scared of. Luckily, it's not rear-wheel drive like the last time I've driven this. 
but yeah, it's still rather terrifying. I might have to stiffen the suspension up. I don't want to do that though. Actually, I'm not allowed to do that. Two hundred four miles an hour, two hundred three miles an hour maintained though is pretty darn good, and the brakes are not too shabby. The traction is the problem though. The traction is the problem. I carry so much speed to here though. I carry 180 miles an hour through there. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then we land it perfect. And it has a perfect landing, which is arguably more impressive. I'm actually ahead of the rival time. I need a coaster here. I need to carry some good speed. I carried better speed, but not quite the speed I'm up to. We ended up carrying the good speed through there because we have such ridiculous acceleration. But... Yeah, it's just not quite up there when it comes to the corner around the, um, the half-pipe section. So, I was better through here, though. I was a lot better. Actually, 100, 109 miles an hour is a lot through there. I just don't think... You know what? I've realized why I probably don't have the cornering grip. I don't have front arrow. Well, that was my stupid, I guess. I guess eventually someday we'll have to do a revisit on this stuff. Because I I am sorry, Porsche. And sorry, Porsche fans. Um, I like this car, but I just... It just slipped my mind to do the arrow parts. And sorry that I forgot such a crucial feature. But, I have to keep running it like this. I'm, I, just, I don't have a choice. I have to keep running it. I'm not going to stop midway through just because I made a stupid, stupid error on my part. It's not the car's fault, but it is mine and I can't change it. That's just an unfortunate little rule. Carry a bit more speed through there. But, unfortunately, due to our, you know, considering our lack of arrow, this is doing remarkably well. Like, no car has run without arrow in this series besides the twin mill. And this is a phenomenal piece of machinery for having zero arrow parts on it. Now we are still a w quite a ways down, but this is a truly incredible piece of machinery because this is missing one of the most important elements of a car when it comes to this part, this series, and yeah, it's just completely slipped my mind. I put, <laughs> um, I see what I did. I put the front arrow on, but I didn't put the back arrow. Oopsie. Well, that's my stupid. Um, yeah, I'll just do a revisit on it at some point. But considering without the arrow, that's still a pretty darn good time of one eighteen point five one two. And despite my incredibly stupid error with the lack of rear arrow, a 118.512 will put the 356 faster than the BMW 507, promoting the 356 into third place. It is a couple tenths of a second down on the twin mill. However, it is a two tenths of a second faster, three tenths of a second faster than the BMW 507. And that had rear arrow. And it had more power. Now it wasn't quite as light, it was a couple hundred pounds heavier. However, it didn't have it had a full arrow on it. So considering this vehicle is a messed up build on my part, and I could probably build this thing a lot better in terms of my improvements on it, this vehicle did incredibly well. I'm I am amazed in how good this car was without its aero parts and a probably bit too light. I probably didn't need to take that much weight out to make it below 1700 because you want some weight to give us some traction and some control, but you don't want a lot of weight you know, so you don't have sluggish acceleration. I think I went a little bit too light with the car, but that's just how the world works sometimes. Kind of let's say ooh lightness, but yeah. Still a remarkably good time. But that is it for this episode of Forza Horizon. We'll be back with more.